What's up everybody? This is Chemist Keeps Going. My name's Chemist and today we're going to make granola. So if you want to find out how, stick with the video. Before we go into the kitchen, uh, let me just show you this, it's crazy. So we're going to go into the kitchen and we are going to make this granola. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make it but I'm also going to show you the appliance that I used to make it as well because I have a few appliances as I'm sure you know. So I'm going to show you the appliance that I used to make it. It's very quick, very simple, very easy. Okay, so let me show you what's in the ingredients. We are going to be making granola today and some of you might be thinking why are we making granola? Well, number one is tasty, number two it's so versatile. Number three, it's very easy to make. I really don't think a lot of people understand how easy granola is to make. And number four, it actually can be fairly healthy. You know, a lot of people might be thinking, well, when I go to the supermarket, I can see on the nutritional information on the back of the packages that there's a lot of sugar, there's a lot of salt, there's all these different additives. And yeah, you're right, I'm not gonna lie to you, but you also have to understand a lot of these commercially produced granolas, they have all these additives because that's what the companies put in them to create certain flavor profiles and you know to prolong the lifespan of it. And really and truly, we don't need that. So making things at home yourself is the best way of knowing exactly what's going into your food and making sure that you can make it as healthy as possible. So the recipe that I'm gonna show you today is it's traditionally when I first used to make it because I've been doing this for a few years now um, it was maple and pecan with cranberries however I then added hazelnuts because I found when you put hazelnuts in that roasted hazelnut flavor oh it's so nice it gives it almost like a malted type of chocolate undertone to it it's just really really such a nice flavor that paired with the maple syrup because I use maple syrup in mine you can use honey you can use agave nectar so long as you've got a naturally sweet binding agent you're generally fine today the recipe that I'm gonna be doing isn't gonna be with pecans because I don't have any pecans and we are not about to go out in this snow just for pecans. So I've substituted those for almonds. And that's the great thing about granola. There's no right or wrong way of making this type of recipe. The only thing is you do need a few key ingredients. So number one, you're going to need oats because you can't make granola without oats. Number two, you are going to need some type of binding agent. And that's where your natural sweetener comes in. Also, you do want to have a touch of salt. It helps to balance out the sweetness of any dried fruit that you're going to have. You can put any nuts in there, you can put any dried fruit in there, but the most important thing is with the dried fruit, you do need to make sure you add it at the end. If you put it in while you're doing the cooking process, because of the high sugar content of most dried fruit, it will burn and you don't want that. So let's see what we're gonna be using for the recipe today. Okay, so first and foremost, I've got my oats, because you need oats when you're making granola. The other thing that I've got is I've got some oil because I'm going to be using a active fry and I'll talk about that in a second um, I just need a little bit of oil almost like lubrication I've got my dried fruits and my dried fruits are cranberries I've got my hazelnuts I've got almonds I've got some maple syrup I've also got some cinnamon and I've got some vanilla extract I would recommend using extract, don't use essence. And then I've just got a little bit of salt and that's your ingredients, it's that simple. And again, the nuts and the fruits, you can substitute whatever you want. You don't need to use the nuts that I'm using, you don't need to use the dried fruit that I'm using, you can put anything in there. It depends on your personal preference, to be honest. What am I gonna be using to make my granola today? I'm gonna be using the Tefal Actifry, but when you're making granola, you can use Tefal Actifry, Philips Air Fryer is more of a tower as opposed to like a basin like this. You can also use an air fry oven. This is my Sage or Breville, depending on where you are in the world, Smart Oven Air. So this has an air fry function, but it's also a conventional oven as well. So you can do it in something like that. 
If you want to know more about this product, check out my video that's attached because I did a really great chicken recipe in that. Check that out once you've done with this video. The other thing that you can use is you can use a conventional oven as well. Now, if you're going to use a conventional oven, just bear in mind that you will need to cook it just a little bit longer and you'll also need to keep an eye on your granola because you want to make sure that you're breaking it up and it's not clumping together as one big flat sheet because you're going to have like a really super hard kind of flapjack and you don't want that. I'm using the Tefal ActiFry and the way that this works is it has one temperature so when you're using it you just set the timer and the timer will determine the level of doneness that you have. There's a paddle inside the machine that actually stirs whatever it is that you're cooking at the time. Now with the ActiFry there are other models. I have the mini size and I know it doesn't look very mini but for me it's plenty big. It's not too big that I don't want to bring it out every so often because with my ActiFry I don't keep it on the countertops unlike my other appliances because I use them quite a lot. My ActiFry is an occasional use appliance so I keep that in my cupboard but the great thing is that when I do want to use it, I don't have to think, oh, I need to bring this attachment and that attachment. Everything is contained within the machine itself. So I just bring it out and I can put it anywhere. I don't have to put it on a certain counter. I mean, to be honest, I've used it to cook and I've placed it on my um, bar stool because I didn't have any table space. So it's great in that respect as well. It's very practical. It's all done. So next thing that we've got to do, we've got to put it in the air fryer. Now, if you're going to be doing this in the oven, what you would need to do, get yourself a flat baking sheet, line it with some foil or parchment paper, whichever is easier for you. Place it nice and flat on the surface and you'll bake it in the oven for around about 20 minutes at about 300 degrees. Make sure during that cooking time, you do check on it and then you do move it around. So I'd say probably about five to seven minutes, have a look and then just give it a little bit of a mix. And then after about another 10 to 15 minutes, give it another mix and then you can leave it. If you're doing it in the T-Fal ActiFry, you don't need to worry about that because it will be stirred itself. If you're doing it in the Philips air fryer, Again, you will need to shake it and agitate it a little bit, but you may find that some of the flakes will drop through the, um, the mesh basket, so just bear that in mind as well. I got my cranberries here. I'm just gonna put it in for like a minute. And there you go. So I've put it into this bowl. The reason being is that you want it to cool, but you don't wanna leave it in the machine. So if you're doing it in the active fryer or an air fryer, remove it from the machine, put it in a bowl or on a tray, let it cool. If you're doing it in the oven, just remove the baking sheet and put it to the side. Make sure that you're breaking up the granola so it's not all clumped together. Now, if you want, you can actually add just a drizzle of whatever binding agent slash sweetener or flavoring that you used. And what that will do is it will give it a nice little glaze while it's warm, but then when it dries, it's almost as though the nuts have been candied. So when you're having it as cereal, oh, 
that milk is going to get so much flavor or when you're just having it as a snack it makes it so moorish like irresistible now once you've let it dry you can put it in a container now if you're going to put it in a regular container you're going to be looking at about three to five days um, if you've got it in an airtight container it will be up to about 10 days but to be honest i don't even think it will last you that long you're just finish the whole lot. But yeah, that's the recipe. I told you it was quick, I told you it was easy, and I told you it was tasty. And the great thing about this is you know everything that has gone into this. So we have oats, maple syrup, almonds, hazelnuts, cranberries, cinnamon, vanilla extract, and a sprinkling of salt. Other than that, you've only got half a teaspoon of oil, and for the oil, I used rapeseed. So rapeseed has a very high burn content, but um, it's flavorless. It doesn't have a strong flavor, which is basically what you want, because you want the natural flavors of your other ingredients to shine through. So. If you enjoyed the video guys, do give it a thumbs up. It definitely helps other people see this content. And do think about subscribing to my channel and clicking the notification bell so that every time I release a new video, you'll be informed. Until the next time guys, have a good day. I'll see you soon.